Mm -hmm. People should understand that for every action, there is a reaction. Okay? Doesn't necessarily have to be a positive reaction, but for every action and every vibration that you send off into this universe, I dare say that it's you know has consequences. Um, and so at this point, I think that a lot of people thought that they were going to send all of those uh, Haitian immigrants. Um, Back where they came from, as quiet as 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 they did it, and I mean, as quickly and swiftly as they did it, and not have any consequences. And it's amazing that uh, you never see white people, um, you know, being submitted or I guess turned back uh, for being immigrants. And what would happen if they did? Would they encounter the same treatment? as the Haitians or the Ecuadorians, you know, and that's Puerto Ricans, whoever. It, it, that's a very, very, very uh, uh, sensitive subject, and it is a subject that we still all should ponder because these are the United States of America. And when we start talking about um, go back to your country, um, if that was to happen, Again, I always say that he, the person that is saying that should really, really know history because it it would behoove them to tell someone to go back to where they came from if their origins are in the cave. If your origins are in the cave, then you have no business telling anybody to go back somewhere where somebody came from because it just makes no sense. And it just shows your ignorant level, your, your mindset. Um, to think that you can say that to somebody. In fact, that's my that's my gauge to how uh, crazy you really are, uh, or just how um, intelligent you are, is when you make those kind of comments. But back to the uh, issue at hand. I guess those two minutes are up. You know, again, there's consequences for everything we do. And these consequences, uh, this this story I'm about to come up with, were the consequences that I believe that America uh, reaped from sending those people back, all those Haitians back, and the way they did it, the wicked and uh, nature, and how they did it, riding down on horses and whips. And anyway, Ohio Christian group, who seventeen missionaries have been kidnapped, ha- have been kidnapped in Haiti. They have tens of millions of dollars in assets, accounts show, as experts say victims will put up ransom. They will be put up for ransom, these missionaries, because y'all know what they do. They go into these countries first with the Bibles, right? All the countries that have the gold and the minerals or whatever natural resources those native countries may have. The European who is not a native of anywhere. Goes in the elite group goes into these countries, try to pillage and rape them for the resources, and mm, basically they end up giving them the Bibles, and the native end up giving them the resources. Okay, so there's a lot of missionaries over there, as is in Africa, as is um, they all over the place, doing all types of things. Um, that are so far away from uh, Christian military beha- uh, missionary behavior that uh, it needs to be delved into. However, these 17 missionaries were abducted on Saturday on the outskirts of Haiti's capital, Port-au-Prince. Five men, seven women, and five children were snatched en route to the airport. The group is believed to have been taken by a gang of 400 Mawuzu. The gang controlled the town of Croix des Boquet, where the 17 are likely held. Croix des Boquet. A security analyst said the group, I mean, the gang could be hoping for a million dollar per person ransom. 
Also, 400 Mawuzu kidnapped a group of five priests and two nuns in April in the area. They are held for three weeks before their release, unharmed but malnutrition. They were held. And that was before they saw the mistreatment of the Haiti, Haitians that uh, tried to make it to America. Haiti is now the highest per capita kidnapping rate in the world. That's what it has now. People from all walks of life are targeted. And on Monday, a strike has been called. American and Canadian missionaries abducted in Haiti belong to an Ohio-based missionary organization worth tens of millions of dollars, as expert warned the victims that will be ransomed for up to a million dollars each. Working with the Ohio-based Amish organization, Children Aid Ministries, the 17 were taken to the La Tremblay area on the outskirts of the capital of Port-au-Prince. Um, but I mean, it is controlled by 400 Mawuzu gang, whose members are now likely to demand a fee for the hostages release. The missionary organization, which is registered with the Evangelical Council for Financial Accountability, is extremely well funded thanks to generous donations from the Christian community. Last year, they reported $87 million in assets, including $17.3 million in cash and almost $20 million in gifts in kind, likely to include property donated to the mission. Gideon Jean Jean, the executive director of uh, the, uh, the Center for the Analysis and Research in Human Rights and Advocacy Group in Port-au-Prince, told the New York Times that kidnappers could ask for as much as a million dollars per hostage in ransom for each of the 17. Oh, they're going to negotiate, he said. The hostages are going to be free, that's for sure, but we don't know how many and how many days or when. They're going to have to negotiate. The 400 Mawazu gang don't want to kill the hostages. Nowadays, the gangs, especially in a situation that is little financially vulnerable, they increase kidnappings to have enough money. So, the motive behind the surge of kidnappings for us is a financial one. If the gangs need money to buy ammunition and get weapons and to be able to fund the function. The State Department on Sunday evening confirmed the kidnap of 16 U.S. missionaries and one Canadian in Haiti as hostages negotiators were summoned and one expert said the criminal gang could be hoping for as much as $1 million per person. The group consists of five men, seven women, and five children, but one of whom was only two years old and he was abducted from a bus headed to the airport to drop off some members of their party. Well, well, a person familiar with the situation. Um, said he claims um, that one of the abducted Americans posted a cry for help in a WhatsApp group as the kidnappings were occurring. Please pray for us. We are being held hostage. They kidnapped our driver. Pray, pray, pray. We don't know where they are taking us, the abductee said. The kidnappers are believed to be members of the 400 Mawazu gang. Mawazu, said the Miami Herald. Christian Aid Memory said in a Ministry said in a statement, we request urgent prayers for the group of Christian aid ministries, workers who were abducted while on a trip to a visit to an orphan Saturday, October 16th. We are all seeking God's directions for a solution, and authorities are seeking ways to help. Now, y'all know how I feel about a lot of those missionary groups, so I, I'm not make, I'm making a comment one way or the other about them. I don't like to see a bunch of white missionaries, and I'm just going to keep it real with y'all, in these places that just are just all 
black and brown bodies. You know, we just found a, you know, because you always put, you know, finding a way to go over there and um, just be devilish. There's no other way to describe it. Either over there um, giving the children medicine that you don't know what the hell it is. And because the laws and stuff are so lax over there and the, um, uh, uh, there's no registry or you don't have the same type of um, dog watching groups as you have over in America. You go over there with a white coat and a, and a thethoscope and because white supremacy is such a, a stain on the human family that when somebody see you automatically they think that you're going to do the right thing because you're white. But you could be like a lot of those missionaries over there raping the children could be over there. Um, you know, like I said, you know, you sell them pipe dreams. And this is how a lot of why a lot of those people and predators and stuff go over to these uh, poor countries. They go over there and take advantage of the natives over there. They doing the same thing in Gambia. I mean, I couldn't believe what I was experiencing in terms of seeing um, the, the tourists that come there to have. Uh, intercourse with those young teenage boys, women my age, okay, or the men that come and get the little kids because the country is poor and um, they come over there with their trinkets of goodies. So, you know, like I said, so, some of this stuff is just disgusting. But Haiti has the highest per capita kidnapping in rate of the world. Now, remember that. Um, now, with Port-au-Prince, is now suffering more kidnappings than vastly larger Bogota, Mexi Mexico City, and Sao Paulo combined, resulting um, in cons uh, you know consulting firm control risk. Um, firm control risk. From January to September, there were 628 people kidnapped, including 29 foreigners. And that is a lot. Uh, Haiti last experienced a major surge in kidnappings and gang violence after rebellion topped then President Jean Aristide in 2004, prompting the United Nations to send in peacekeeping force. A, a peacekeeping force. The departure of the force. In October 2019 was followed by the resurgence of gang crime, according to human rights activists who say kidnapping has proven lucrative at a time when Haiti's economy is teetering. Y'all know what's going on over there. So now you want to go over there and keep on with them Bibles and keep on trying to get you some missionaries uh, and whatever you over there looking for because it's been total destruction. Some children in sale, whatever it is. That's going to be the price to pay now when you come over there, missionaries. You may possibly be getting kidnapped. And it's important that you know that. It's important that you know that. Because it's common for in Haiti for kidnappers to wait 24 to 72 hours before issuing random demands, which typically start high before negotiating down. So... You know, there's a lot of people that have been cat kidnapped over in Haiti, and they're not done. They're not done. So I want to know what y'all think. I want to know what you think about that. You, do you think it has any, uh, uh, bear any, you know, similarities or any correlation between what happened when the uh, Haitian, uh, uh, um, uh, um, fleers came over here? And how we treated him. Well, what Joe Biden did, I should say. So, they decided, well, we're going to do what you're going to do. Hopefully, it, don't, not, it, don't, it ends nice and not like it did in El Salvador, where those nuns were uh, executed um, by the Salvatorian, those gangs over there. So, like I said, it's a mad, it's a madhouse. <laughs> so, with that being said... Try to find a little beauty in your little corner of the world and take advantage of it. And know that ain't nothing promised to you and nothing should be given to you. All right. See you in the next video.